Today, we're diving into the high-stakes world of dancehall, a music genre known for its intense competition and fierce battles among DJs striving for the top spot. Among these, one name stood out and commanded respect for over two decades, Ninja Man. Just as ninjas in ancient Japan were masters of stealth and combat, Ninja Man became a formidable force in the dancehall scene. His razor-sharp wit, humor, and unmatched freestyle skills made him a legend, feared and admired by his peers. Nicknamed the Don Gorgon, a Jamaican term for someone to be feared or the best in their field, Ninja Man's presence was unrivaled. In a genre filled with strong personalities, Ninja Man carved out a unique space for himself. Although he wasn't the first DJ to embrace a tough image, the 1990s saw him emerge as the face of the dancehall bad man persona. His lyrics, often centered around violence and firearms, began to mirror his real-life experiences, leading to a complex legacy marked by both brilliance and controversy. Ninja Man's journey began humbly as Desmond John Ballantyne, born on January 20, 1966, in Anato Bay, Jamaica. At the age of 11, his family moved to Kingston, settling in the rough neighborhood of Seawright Gardens, known for producing some of Dancehall's biggest stars. Inspired by his surroundings, young Desmond was drawn to the world of reggae and by age 12, he was already performing as a DJ with a local sound system, initially going by the name Double Unattractive. By 1980, his talent had earned him a place with the legendary Kilimanjaro sound system, one of Jamaica's best. It was here that he honed his skills under the guidance of renowned DJs like Supercat and Early B. As his reputation grew, he transitioned from double unattractive to unattractive man, and eventually to Ninja Man, a nickname given to him for his quick adaptability and sharp lyrical prowess. Ninja Man's rise continued as he became a recording artist with Kilimanjaro's record label, releasing his first single, Protection, a duet with singer Courtney Melody. The track was well received, showcasing his incredible lyrical abilities and commanding delivery. During this time, Ninja Man also played a pivotal role in the career of another dancehall icon, Shabba Ranks. Recognizing Shabba's potential, Ninja Man introduced him to the Kilimanjaro sound system, helping to launch a career that would eventually lead to Shabba's own success. However, their friendship would later sour, giving rise to one of dancehall's most famous rivalries. As Ninja Man's fame grew, so did his demand. He collaborated with top producers like King Jammy, Philip Fadis Burrell, and Gussie Clark, each eager to work with his unique style. His breakthrough came in 1988 with the hit Cover Me, followed by Ziggy Top, both showcasing his versatility. However, by 1989, Ninja Man began to shift towards a more hardcore, gangster persona in his lyrics, aligning with a broader trend in dancehall towards darker themes. This transition set the stage for an epic showdown at the 1990 Sting Festival, where Ninja Man faced off against Shabba Ranks in a legendary lyrical battle. The clash was intense, with both artists delivering powerful performances, but it was Ninja Man who emerged victorious, solidifying his status as the Don Gorgon of Dancehall. Ninja Man's reputation as a formidable DJ only grew stronger as he consistently triumphed in sound clashes across the island. However, there was one final, unbeaten challenger left, his former mentor, Super Cat. The buzz surrounding both artists fueled intense debates among fans, setting the stage for a much-anticipated showdown at the 1991 Sting Festival. Just as he had dismantled Shabba ranks the previous year, Ninja Man systematically disarmed Super Cat with his sharp lyrics, infectious humor, and impeccable timing. The clash was going in Ninja Man's favor when unruly fans began hurling bottles at Super Cat, abruptly ending the contest. Ninja Man would further solidify his dominance in 1992 when he returned to Sting for another lyrical duel, this time against Buju Banton, whom he also defeated with his razor-sharp wit. By then, Ninja Man had earned the title of the most feared DJ in dancehall, known for both his undefeated streak in sound clashes and his ominous, fire-weapon-themed lyrics in tracks like Unalive Dim, My Weapon, Test the High Power, and Above the Law. These songs cemented his image as Jamaica's top rude boy and inspired a new generation of DJs, including Mad Cobra, Ricky General, and even Capleton. Always ready to face any challenger, Ninja Man even clashed with his former friend, Flurgan, in an epic beef that he ultimately won. However, by 1993, his excessively violent rude boy image began to provoke a backlash, and the public's interest in his music waned. 
As a result, Ninja Man struggled to find recording opportunities and live performances as promoters and producers distanced themselves from him. During this period, the Rasta Renaissance was on the rise, with audiences craving more conscious, spiritually uplifting music, which was being delivered by new artists like Garnett Silk and Luciano. By 1997, Ninja Man had hit rock bottom, battling a severe addiction to crack illegal substance. In what many saw as a public relations move, he reinvented himself as a born-again Christian and briefly performed under the name Brother Desmond as a gospel dancehall artist. However, it wasn't long before he reverted to his former Ninja Man persona. In 1999, Ninja Man ventured into acting, landing a role in the successful Jamaican film Third World Cup, alongside well-known actors like Paul Campbell and veteran actor Carl Bradshaw. Despite this apparent resurgence, his turbulent behavior caught up with him and he was convicted of firearm possession, leading to a year-long prison sentence. After his release, Ninja Man continued his musical career, enjoying his reputation as Jamaica's undefeated DJ. However, his streak came to a crushing halt when he faced Mad Cobra at Sting in 1995 and again in 2000 when he was decisively beaten by the late dancehall legend, Merciless. Although this defeat was a significant blow, Ninja Man remained a formidable force in the dancehall scene, known for his sharp-tongued lyrics. In 2003, he clashed with another rising star, Vibes Cartel, and delivered such a harsh lyrical thrashing that Vibes Cartel lost his temper and physically confronted Ninja Man on stage. Despite this altercation, Ninja Man continued to build his legacy, appearing in films like Rude Boy, 2003, and Gangster's Paradise, 2004. While Ninja Man experienced a resurgence in the new millennium with fresh music and sold-out shows, he remained mired in controversy and legal troubles. After narrowly escaping convictions for sexual assault, domestic violence, and being caught with an illegal firearm at Sting 2002, his luck ran out in 2009. In March of that year, he and his son were arrested for unaliving, and after a lengthy trial, both were found guilty in December 2017. Ninja Man was sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole after 25 years, by which time he will be at least 75 years old. The story of Ninja Man is a tragic tale of a supremely talented artist who succumbed to a life of crime, ultimately becoming a cautionary example for future generations of reggae artists. Despite achieving the kind of success most can only dream of, his darker instincts and criminal actions have led him to a grim fate serving as a stark reminder of the dangers that can accompany fame in the world of dancehall. In the wise words of the great Buju Banton, dancehall doesn't have to be slack, and Ninja Man's story underscores the need for a return to more positive and uplifting themes in this vibrant genre. Ninja Man's story is a powerful reminder that the dancehall world is as unforgiving as it is thrilling. His rise to the top was meteoric, but his fall serves as a cautionary tale. What are your thoughts on the legacy of the Don Gorgon? Share them in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more deep dives into the legends of dancehall.